Hello guys, so I'm finally doing it. Some weeks ago someone asked in the comment section of a video if I could show in my holdings what my strategy is with my portfolio and why I'm holding these companies. I do have to say that I've been holding on this video for the long time for several reasons. First, because this is a public video on the internet and even though I receive a lot of support from you guys in my channel, I'm basically new to all this and still do not feel that comfortable sharing too much personal information online. So in today's video, I will show which stocks are in my portfolio, will show the percentage that they represent, how they are performing and explain why I invest in these companies. So please smash that like button and subscribe since it really helps my channel out. I will have timestamps down below in the description just in case you just want to go and see my holdings but wanted to mention some important things first. First, I have always said that I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a perfect investor by any means. I still have a lot of things to learn because there is always something new and that is why I created this channel to document my trajectory of investing in the stock market. You will be able to see that not all my choices are perfect and that I'm down in some of my positions. I wanted to be transparent with that and demonstrate that stocks do not always go up and if someone told you that they have never lost money in the stock market, that person is lying. Now, do not think that I have a huge portfolio because I don't. I started this portfolio about a year and a half ago since I was not able to invest in the stock market until late, late 2017. As you may have noticed, I was not born here in the US. I was born in Venezuela and moved to the US in 2014 to go to college. I did not have any social security number at the moment, so I was not able to invest in the stock market. But always wanted to invest, so I started investing in other things. First, I started investing in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. I purchased for the first time in May 2017, when Bitcoin was around $1,800. Hold those up until I got my social security number and instead of starting investing long term, I decided to start day trading options, which I do not recommend at all. I know people that may do pretty well with that and leave off that, but for me, it was a complete mess that made me lose a lot of money, almost all the gains I had from Bitcoin. It was then when I decided to start investing long term. I have always been interested in investing in stocks but learned about options, thought that I was going to be able to master it and it was basically not for me. A lot of stress in my opinion. So right now I only invest in stocks for the long term and sometimes I do some covert calls options which someone already asked in my free disco group chat link down below in the description to do a video about it so that video is also coming. Now let's get started. I do have to say that I use Robinhood for my portfolio since I started with them back in 2017 and I liked it a lot. If you would like to create an account with them and get a free stock just by joining in, use the link down in the description below. I have a total of 14 stocks in my portfolio. The first stock and my biggest holding is Amazon, ticker symbol AMNZ. It represents 40.58% of my portfolio, which I know is a very heavy stake for a portfolio, but hey, the stock is worth more than $3,000 per share. I have an average cost of $1,663. This is a type of stock that I have in my portfolio basically since I started, since I bought it around March 2019, and is a stock that I'm planning to hold all the way until my retirement. They are not only the e-commerce giant, but it is in the top three of advertising business and the cloud business as well with their AWS. Also, they just bought about two months ago a company called Zooks, which is a self-driving company here in the US. So basically, Amazon is a very diversified business, which I think still has a lot of room to grow and expand even more. My next stock in the portfolio is MasterCard, ticker symbol MA. It represents 8.84% of my portfolio. My average cost in this stock is $273 per share. Over years, MasterCard have been focusing on continuing innovating and growing their business by acquisition important factors. These acquisitions are focused in data analytics, cyber and technology, intelligence, and more. Also, the pandemic has accelerated the use of electronic forms of payments. Before the pandemic, most of us were used to only pay with credit card or debit card or doing a transfer with Venmo or Cell instead of holding cash to pay anything. Obviously, the pandemic has accelerated the growth in that aspect. The next stock in my portfolio is Royal Caribbean, ticker symbol RCL. It represents 7.96% of my portfolio and have an average cost of $53.71 per share. 
These are stock that I started buying before the pandemic in February when the stock was around $99 since I thought it was an excellent price at the moment. Then the pandemic got here and it got hit so I have been averaging down since then. Even though Royal Caribbean is the second biggest company in the cruise line industry since Carnival is the first one, I started investing in it because I saw a bigger potential than with Carnival. Carnival is a huge company and it could give me a good and stable return, but with Royal Caribbean I'm seeing it more as a growth potential since they are not the biggest ones, they are smaller than Carnival, meaning that they still have more room to grow than them. My fourth stock in this portfolio is Facebook, ticker symbol FB. It represents 7.03% of my portfolio and have an average cost of $198 per share. They are growing exponentially and I think that they have still a lot of room to grow. They are in the top three of advertising businesses competing with Google and Amazon. Facebook is expanding their business even more since months ago they announced they were going to launch Facebook shops which it will, in my opinion, accelerate the growth of the company and their advertising business. I think this mainly because small businesses will pay more ads in order to attract people to their shop. It expands Facebook as a company because now they are entering into the e-commerce world which has seen a huge growth and I do not expect any slowdown in it. Next stock in my portfolio is Carnival, ticker symbol CCL. If you are new to my channel, it is important to understand that there are several industries in which I like to invest in the biggest two players within the industry to have more exposure to it and the cruise line is the first example here. I have an average cost of $37.10 per share and it represents 6.15% of my portfolio. This is a company that I started investing in December 2019 since I saw that they are in a very profitable industry and see a potential growth in the future. Obviously the pandemic arrived and they are still getting hit very hard since the cruise industry is still shut down here in the US apparently until October. Carnival is the biggest player, the leader in the industry and even though I'm down big in my position I do not feel like selling it since I think it will be able to go back up with time. Obviously it could take years but I'm willing to wait since I still think that this company has potential. Maybe what I will do is average down a little bit more in my position which I have not that much mainly because I created a position size which I felt comfortable with before the pandemic and that is why my average cost is that high. Next stock is Lemonade, ticker symbol LMND. It represents 5.02% of my portfolio and have an average cost of $58.57 .57 per share. I know that I said that a perfect price for this stock is below $50, but I've mentioned before that I like to start a small position to monitor the stock and then average down. Also, I'm not planning to have a big position with them until the lockup period ends. I do have to say that I like this company a lot because it is a growth and disruptive company. I have two videos talking about it if you want a more in-depth analysis, but I think that they have an excellent product to disrupt the insurance industry. They are targeting younger generations which is the right people to target for what they want to do. Obviously, this is going to be a long-term hold for me of about five years or even more since they are a brand new company that still makes a lot of errors with their AI, but it is normal since it is brand new and they need to collect more and more data to be able to improve. If you're someone that invested in this stock, take into consideration that we are going to see a lot of volatility within the next few years. The luck of period is not over. We are going to see huge run-ups and then panic selling without any single reason. We're going to see the company reporting excellent quarters and then awful ones. So what I want to say with all this is that if you are investing in this company do not expect a hundred percent return anytime soon since they still need time to get to where they want to be. You need to be patient with your money and invest in companies where you feel comfortable. If you do not like to have a right position or you do not think that you will be able to hold for the long term then Lemonade or any growth stock is not for you since it involves huge risk and huge volatility but in the long run, I expect huge return. Next stock is Wells Fargo, ticker symbol WFC. It represents 3.89% of my portfolio and I have an average cost of $47.14 per share, meaning that I'm down almost 50% as well. I know that they got hit really hard because of the fake account scandal in 2016 and because of that the Fed put an asset cap in the company which it is limiting their business plus interest rates have been dropping since 2000. 
2018. Still, Wells Fargo is the biggest small business lender and the biggest mortgage lender by value. I think that all this is a temporary thing for the business, a temporary setback in which they will get out of. They are the third biggest bank here in the US and I think that after the Fed eliminates that asset cap and they are able to clean their reputation, they will start seeing a lot of growth in their business. I do have to say that what it helped my decision to invest in this company was our dividend yield which was recently lowered and I did not like that at all. But well, I still think that in the long, long, long term it is a good holding. Next stock in my portfolio is Upwork, ticker symbol UP with WK. It represents 3.49% of my portfolio and has an average cost of $14.30 per share. I started buying this stock back in June. At the moment, I started with Shopify drop shipping and needed someone to help me with the logo for my website and wanted someone to help me edit the videos for advertising. I liked the service, thought it was really innovative and bought few stocks. I think that they have a good and growth potential and even more now when people are looking for ways to work from home and a lot of people have actually capability to convert into a freelancer. And where is better to start as a freelancer than any of these websites? Obviously then I saw Jeremy from Financial Education which I have mentioned that I'm a big fan of his channel and that he was investing in this company and it is always good to see huge investors and very intelligent ones like him investing and selecting this type of stocks. Next stock is Disney, sticker symbol DIS. It represents 3.40% of my portfolio and right now have an average cost of $123.20 per share. Even though Disney got hit really hard because of the pandemic since they had to close their theme parks, resorts and cruises for several months and their only revenue would come from their online services such as Disney Plus which has seen a massive growth since it was launched last year. They ha already have 55 million paid subscribers and they were expecting to get to 60 to 90 million subscribers by 2024 which is a huge acceleration in growth. In my opinion, it is a well diversified business that will get back to their feet after the pandemic. Even though they have already opened their theme parks, they still do not accept 100% capacity and obviously that hurts their revenue, but it is better than nothing. Next stock is Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA. Have an average cost of 199.37% and it represents 3.09% of my portfolio. I started investing in Alibaba because they are the biggest e-commerce player in China. Not only that, they are also into digital media, wholesaling business and cloud computing business, which is growing exponentially. I know that a lot of people do not like to invest in Chinese companies because of that reputation that they have had in the last years. But I think that Alibaba is a more stable company than any of these Chinese companies and do not see them committing any fraud since it would literally hurt almost all China. Next stock in my portfolio is Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT. It represents 2.69% of my portfolio and has an average price of $136.19 per share. This is another stock that I'm planning to hold until my retirement and obviously I'm thinking about adding more in my position throughout the years. Microsoft is an excellent technology company that is involved in different sectors. They are in the cloud business with Microsoft Azure. They are the leaders in computer software with Office 365 and Windows. They are in the gaming sector with Xbox and more. It is a stock that has always provided an excellent return over years and I think it will continue like that. Next stock is Visa, ticker symbol V. It represents 2.69% of my portfolio and have an average cost of $147.36 per share. I do have to say that Visa has been my favorite stock for years. It was the first stock I ever bought in 2017 when I first opened my brokerage account and then sold it when I started with options trading and bought back again in 2019. As MasterCard, Visa has benefited from the growth in digital payment due to the pandemic. Also, in June, they announced a partnership with Facebook to launch payments on WhatsApp in Brazil, which in my opinion, it is a huge deal since Brazil is an excellent and big market. WhatsApp has 120 million users in Brazil, which is the largest country in South America, and it is a huge opportunity for Visa to expand even more their business. Next stock in my portfolio is Lyft. It represents 2.02% of my portfolio and have an average cost of $34.78 
for sure. I started investing in Lyft mainly because of their potential. I had a position in Uber and Lyft at the time and decided to sell Uber with 30% gain and invest those gains in Lyft since I think that Lyft is only in two countries while Uber is in more than 80, meaning that Lyft still have huge space to expand. In my opinion, I think that Lyft is undervalued and I will increase my position even more with time. Next stock is Square, ticker symbol SQ. I have an average cost of $132.43 per share and it represents 1.64% of my portfolio. I do have to say that this is a kind of stock that I regret not buying more before. As I said before, when I start a position on a stock, I do not go all in at once. I start adding to my position little by little, looking to find a better price. With Square, it has been impossible. I started buying in June when it was at $102 per share and thought it was going to stay around that price for a while, but no, it didn't. As you can see, it never got to a lower point, so I've been adding to my position, but obviously not at lower prices. This is a stock that I see huge growth potential because of their technology. Square is a fintech company that has been able to disrupt the banking industry and think that still have way more room to grow. My last stock in this portfolio is Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. It represents 1.52% of my portfolio. I started buying this stock about a week ago, so I have an average price of $116.25 per share. I'm going to increase my position little by little since, as I said, I would prefer to see it below $110, but that is why I gradually buy to be able to average down my average cost if it drops. I think most of you guys know why I'm investing in Apple. It is a huge technology company that is always trying to create new things or services. They have seen an excellent growth in their services such as Apple TV, Apple Music, Apple Arcade, and more. Both their services and wearables are expected to grow even more from now on. We all know that their primary and most sold product is their iPhone, and even though I thought that their iPhone SE was a desperate move, it ended up being an excellent one for them. They are offering an excellent phone with the same features of an iPhone 11, but with the shape of an iPhone 8 for only $399. They also have Apple Pay, which has been expanded around the world to 49 markets. I do expect them to continue with their content growth year over year, and I'm waiting for them to come out with a very innovative product. Just like Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft, I'm investing in Apple for the long term and do not think I will sell it until I retire. Those are all the stocks in my portfolio. Please do not invest in any of them without doing your due diligence first since I'm not a financial advisor. Also take into consideration that I'm a long-term investor and do not like to buy stocks just to sell within the next month if I don't see a good return. I like to invest in stocks and hold them for the long term since that is what I have found it works the best for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please smash that like button and subscribe since it really helps my channel out. Thank you and see you next time.